It's 2022. We've got billionaires joyriding in space. We're training viruses to fight cancer. So why does my bike tire still go flat about once a month? Why hasn't NASA solved this? Where is my airless space tire? I live in Bristol in the UK. We invented Banksy, IMDB and Hills. And yet everyone here still cycles. In a city of bikes, where do those disused bike tires go? It turns out each year, more than 1 million tons of old bike tires and inner tubes end up in landfill. Surely there is a better way. You might have been excited to hear about the tires coming to market that use some NASA technology called Nitinol, a shape memory alloy. It's weaved together into a chainmail bike mesh to produce a tire with no air needed to retain its shape. But though it looks cool, it has a lot of problems still to solve before it's anywhere close to usable. How do you fit them to the rim of a bike? How do you coat them in a rubber compound to actually give them some grip? And what happens if one of these nitinol wires were to break? I think there's a better approach, and I think it might be this. This is the cross section of the world's most advanced airless bike tire. It doesn't look like much, but it's the product of 10 years of research and development activity. It's a bike tire that doesn't go flat which sounds easy and sounds obvious, but the science that goes into it is incredibly hard to get right. Today, I wanna to look at the difficulty of making bike tires that don't go flat and tell you why I think this is the future. Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Miles. I help scientists turn scientific breakthroughs that improve the health of people or health of the planet get into the hands of society. Today, I wanna to talk to you about one of the companies that I've been working with, supporting for the last couple months because I really think they are onto something. I'm naturally conflicted in this conversation, but this video isn't sponsored and I'm not being paid to say anything. I'm gonna do my best to present this story as subjectively as I possibly can, but it is worth taking anything I say as opinion. Today I want to talk about the science of reinventing the wheel. I got the opportunity to visit a small workshop out in the West Country at a place called Gecko Rubber Tires and to meet the founder, Richard, who I can only describe as a rubber chemistry wizard. He's made new rubber materials for Formula One companies that we aren't allowed to name. He's made rubber grips for military hardware and obviously he's made one or two bike tires in his time. His workshop is coated in bike tires and all of the custom tools that he's made to produce and prepare them. 10 years of working on this tire problem has produced this. This tire isn't like most. It's made from a blend of rubbers using a patented two-stage rubber heating process that grows the rubber into the right shape and in doing so, fills it full of millions of tiny gas bubbles trapped inside the rubber to produce something called cellular rubber with properties tuned to make them great for bike tires. Because we've got a solid tire as opposed to a, a pneumatic tire with an, inner, an airfield inner tube through it, we're looking at getting the bulk modulus of the tire strong enough to support the weight of a rider, yet the material has the high bounciness that gives us a comfortable ride and low rolling resistance. To give a bit of a highlight as to what I want to talk about, solid tires have actually been around for a while and they have all sucked, with complaints typically focusing around how slow, heavy, difficult to fit, uncomfortable and lacking in grip these solid tires are. Historically, there are basically three conflicting variables that mean solid tires haven't met the expectations of cyclists. Number one, rolling resistance. How difficult is it to actually cycle? The stiffer the material you make the tire out of, the better it performs. However, this negatively affects comfort. Bigger, chunkier tires help here to smooth out the ride. However, the bigger the tire, the more it weighs. Weight or density. The lighter it is, the better. The easier it is to ride, the less work that you need to put in. But typically, the less stiff that rubber tire becomes, making its rolling resistance higher which takes you back in the loop. It's a fight between these properties and so far it's meant no one has really cracked a solution that has really caught on. Most complaints are around how uncomfortable or sluggish the ride is. The best solution to date are pneumatics or air field tires using an inner tube. The downside though is that this is the inside of a normal bike tire. A normal bicycle tire has steel beads running through the bead area, um, has textiles, casings that run all the way from the bead round to the bead. They have these under tread puncture resistant layers, although you can still get a puncture. And then you have a tread compound and usually a bead compound, which is different. And then you've got a material on the inside that coats the, the, fab, the textile material, and that's another rubber compound. So you've got three, four, five different rubber, comp six different rubber compounds, plus steel, 
textiles and other materials. And as a result, they are incredibly difficult to recycle. It's hugely energy intensive, and so usually it's cheaper just to throw it away and make a new one than to reconstitute old tires. According to research by Continental, a big bike tire manufacturer, discarded tires take up space in landfills and collect emitted methane gas from the landfill in the tire cavities, causing those tires to become buoyant and rise to the surface, which can break the landfill liner and spread pollutants into soil and groundwater. On top of that, although natural rubber is natural, it has some sustainability issues similar to palm oil, where rainforests are being cut down in the tropics to make room for rubber tree plantations. Oh, and obviously airfield bike tires still go flat. Now, for elite cyclists where every second counts, pneumatics probably will always win. But I don't think that's where solid tires are trying to excel. I think they're targeting the everyday cyclist, the commuter, the student, the environmentally conscious person that has picked cycling over driving. But the big question is, how do they hold up? I tried the Gecko tires, the leading competitor and pneumatics out for about a month in rotation around Bristol and my honest feedback sounds really strange. I kept finding myself saying, I have no real complaints. And now that doesn't sound that positive, but actually it really is. So let's talk about it. Point one, rolling resistance. Pneumatic or airfield tires kick solid tires butts when it comes to rolling resistance due to something called the coefficient of restitution. Commonly this is defined as a measure between final velocities and initial velocities between two objects before and after a collision. So for example, if you were to bounce two snooker or pool balls together, the first one stops, the second one takes off at pretty much the same speed as the first one. This is because this is a highly elastic collision. It has a high coefficient of restitution, pretty close to one. Air is also pretty close to perfect with a coefficient of restitution approximately around one. So as a bike tire spins, the tire compresses, the deformation of that tire as it comes in contact with the road compresses the air within the bike tire, but that compression, that energy that is stored within that compressed air is given back to you as you keep moving. What this feels like is a smooth frictionless bike ride. The air is able to return that energy back out into the ground, into the wheel. Compared to when you might have, say, a flat tire and pedaling becomes really hard and really sluggish. So the challenge here is to have that high coefficient of restitution, like a pneumatic, but without using an air-filled inner tube. These tires achieve that because inside are essentially hundreds and thousands of tiny bubbles of air captured and surrounded by small cells of rubber. This means that you retain the air-like properties of a tire, but remove the possibility that you could get a puncture. One semi-scientific way to measure this is with a bounce test, measuring the rebound height relative to the dropped height and seeing what percent of the original drop height the tire can reach. Comparing the pneumatic against the leading solid tire against the Gecko tires, the numbers came out as 70% for the pneumatic, 52% for the leading competitor, and about 58% for the Gecko tire. Now, this isn't particularly scientific. A lot of factors can affect it, the tension of the tires, the weight of the rim. So take that answer with a little bit of salt. But let's ask the big question. How does it actually feel to ride? Switching to the leading competitor, a company called Tanis, and using their best product that they have on the market, I did my everyday work commute about eight miles round trip a couple of times over a few days. And I can honestly say I was thinking the whole time about how I couldn't wait for the next day so that I could take them off and put a different tire on. You feel every single bump and hurdle <laughs> that you go over. And I actually found myself avoiding even minor cracks on the road uh, just because it was, it was kind of painful. It was kind of uncomfortable. By counterpoint, when it came to the Gecko tires, I put them on and I actually kept them on. Were they firmer? Yes. Absolutely, they were kind of like riding just a really pumped up air filled tire. And honestly, I found myself just enjoying not needing to feel like I had to give them a squeeze in the morning before setting off to check if they were still pumped up and if not to then have to pump them up. When I was actually running the trial, I got two flat tires on two different days when I was using the pneumatics and I jog walked with the bike, what I've affectionately now called a business run, the rest of the way into the office so that I wasn't late for meetings. To me, the chance of that happening just isn't worth it. Let's talk about weight. 
When it came to weight, obviously airfield tires do pretty well because they're filled with air. I really don't know much about tire weight, so I'll just refer to an article I found comparing the Gecko tires to airless tires. The current 700 by 28 Gecko airless road tire is about 400 grams each. The author compared this against their 320 gram trusty gator skin flat resistant tire plus a standard continental 700 by 28 Presta valve tube which comes in at 135 grams for a total weight of 455 grams, a full 55 grams more than a Gecko airless tire. I told you this guy was a rubber wizard. I've been asked not to go into detail about the specifics of the properties when it comes to density and weights at the moment, as the Gecko team are still finalizing their product. But if you'd like to try them, they are doing a very limited supply on Kickstarter at the moment. I'll leave a link in the description. This will probably be a one-time thing as this probably is more of a B2B offering as in a business to business offering. So here is your one chance to get a direct from the factory bike tire. Let's look at some other properties I looked at in a kind of rapid fire round as we're running out of time. Time to change the Gecko tire, two to five minutes, and you get to use a rubber mallet as demonstrated here by Richard. The leading competitor, the Tannis tires, about 40 minutes to an hour. Plus what I would say is my sanity and self-respect. This was a hard bike tire to change uh, and I probably would never do it again. Lifetime of the tire, about two to four years, which seems like a wide time span, but I guess it depends on how heavily you use them. The retail cost is about 40 to 50 pounds, kind of mid range for a tire. You can definitely get cheaper ones if you want to, but I think there's an interesting economic argument here as to the hidden costs to you in terms of time that you would spend changing or repairing tires and also going out and buying replacement inner tubes. Then you can get into a whole argument about what an hour of your time is actually worth, but I'll leave that conversation there. Here's the interesting one, recyclability. 100% recyclable. It is a single compound, so all you have to do is grind it up, reformulate it, and you can make it into a new batch of tires. As far as I can find, it is the only 100% recyclable bike tire in the world. So how do I feel? Overall conclusion, first product review on the channel. Honestly, I'm pretty sold. Gecko have optimized their rubber processing technique to create solid tires that I think outperform the leading competitor in a way for the first time that actually makes a solid bike tire actually viable. It comes as close as I think you possibly can do to the performance of a pneumatic. Like I said, it's not gonna be for absolutely everyone. If you wanna shave off every single second of your time during a race, say, use a pneumatic tire. But if you are basically anyone else, I would say a solid tire actually could be for you. And you don't have to wait until the NASA technology works out all the kinks. So have these guys reinvented the tire? Yeah, I think so. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.